I, I said, hey, that's my deer. And, and it looked at me again and roared. And it looked at Dad and seen the gun, and then it really roared. Of course, I'm shaking. I said, if that thing makes a move, just shoot it in the head, Dad. And, and of course, Dad, I don't know whether he heard me or not. I took two steps up and tore. I could see up on the flat, and I pointed to the deer. And it looked at the deer, looked at me, snarled. I looked back at the deer. That's my deer. And I, I reached to go grab another limb, take a step up. And it, well, Dad shot uh, and missed it uh, about an inch and a half. Well, he looked at my dad and tapped its head like, damn, that was close, you know? I mean, the, the thing had fear in its eyes. I said, mine, and all I got was a leg. Uh, it stepped over there within about two steps. It was probably 12, 13 yards from him, but two steps or so, bent over, tore the back leg off and slung it right into my chest and set me right back into the creek. Welcome to the Bigfoot Society podcast. On this episode, I have the privilege of talking to country from the great state of Oklahoma. Country has had many different interactions with Sasquatch in his state, and I would ask that you approach this episode with an open mind. Hopefully some people listening will have memories jogged of things they've experienced in the past after hearing this episode. We also need to take a minute to talk about something really important, and it's free to do. Here at Bigfoot Society, we are shooting for the moon. We want to go all the way to the top, but we need your help to get there. Please make sure you're subscribed on YouTube and podcast platforms and share these episodes with a friend. That's the only way we're going to get to where we're going, and let's get into the show. All right, Bigfoot Society, I've got the privilege of talking to a gentleman who uh, came to me through Facebook Messenger uh, he is from the state of Oklahoma. He's got some very interesting uh, things to share. Uh, his name is uh, Country. Uh, the Country, how's it going? Oh, it's going great. A little warm out here this evening. <laughs> oh, man, I, I hear you. We're burning up in Iowa, but I'm sure it's hotter down there. <laughs> oh, yeah. We had uh, yesterday, it was 121 heat index. Oh, my so, yeah, it was pretty hot. Wow, that is, in and you're in a, well, I mean, there's different parts I'm, of Oklahoma, right? I'm, I'm in the Arbuckle Mountains. Ah, okay, yeah, so south, uh, southern Oklahoma, just above Texas, right? Yeah, I call it South Central, okay. southern, southern South Central. All right, all right. Yeah. I'm, I'm familiar with... Uh, the southeast corner, as you can imagine, I talked to a few people from over there. Uh, so th you're the first that I've talked to uh, from the Arbuckle uh, Mountains area. So that's pretty cool. I've talked to a gentleman over in the western part of the state as well. But uh, excited to uh, to talk to you tonight. So it sounds like you have uh, quite the history. But uh, how did things start out with you uh, with uh, interaction? Well, with we the we lived in we lived in Pittsburgh County uh back all oh, since 84 uh the incident there probably happened in uh, when i was 13 i'm 43 now so you can do the math uh, i was bow hunting and it was just about dark uh i hadn't seen a whole lot you know it's pretty quiet evening hunt uh you know usually you see quite a bit but uh not that evening i noticed uh, a few of the the birds and stuff kind of just shut up all of a sudden and they was looking back to my east uh, down the creek, uh, the Coal Creek. Uh, so I looked that way, picked up my binoculars, and I, I didn't see nothing. I was thinking, oh, it's probably hogs or a deer coming through or bobcat, you know, the way they shut up. And I didn't see nothing. Uh, and it went two or three minutes. The light was fading pretty quick. Uh, then all of a sudden I noticed the movement through the trees right along the creek edge. Uh, I, I picked up my binoculars and looked, and I immediately knew it was not a deer. Uh, it was not a bear. Uh, I wasn't real sure what it was because it still had a little bit of brush. Uh, it stepped on out there. It was just casually kind of strolling down the bank, just piddle farting around. And uh, it stopped when the wind shifted from my face to just slightly over my shoulder, blowing right to it. It stopped. It picked its head up. Uh, it looked uh, like it was smelling the air like a deer would do or, you know, an animal. And uh, I froze. It, it was pretty good size, probably eight and a half. And I could tell it was a female. Uh, believe it or not, it had mammary glands. Uh, that's, that's how well I got to see it. 
um, very flat faced, not much of a cone, but it was, uh, there was a ridge there, it, but it could have been hair. Uh, it wasn't just a well, most well-groomed animal that you would see in the, in the woods. Uh, she throwed her head up and started swaying back and forth slightly and looking around, uh, and checking her back trail for some reason. Uh, she, she finally, the wind just kind of picked up a little bit more and, and it was just too much. She ducked down off into the creek and all I could see was the top of her shoulders and her head. And she kept peeking up over the top of the bank and looking. Uh, she never did see me. Uh, but once she cleared me about 200 yards, I heard her come back up into the woods about even with me uh, on the creek bank. Uh, and she screamed. I did not do nothing. Uh, I waited till dark. I planned to sit there till plumb into well the next daylight or the next morning before I climbed down. Uh, and of course, I knew my parents would get a little worried, uh, but nothing new for me to come strolling in two or three, four o'clock in the morning, you know, from being hunting. Uh, but so I wasn't too worried. But about 11 o'clock, I seen a light up there on top of the mountain, which is about. Oh, about a mile and three quarters away. Uh, it's it's a pretty steep mountain. You can see it, and I could barely make him out hollering for me. I did not say a word. I sat there until he he come down there to where I was at, and it was my dad. I told him, my, I said, Dad, uh, you shouldn't be up there or down on the ground. There's there's uh, the Bigfoots here. He said, Oh, they ain't gonna bother you. They never bothered you before. Come on down. And we when I hit the ground. She screamed again, and another one screamed, and then another one screamed, and then whoops, all down the ridge he just come off of. Uh, and we kind of just, he just said, just keeps close to me. Uh, just a matter of fact, just put your finger in my back belt loop, and we'll just go right the way we come out down here. Uh, I didn't hunt that bottom for several years. He made me stay on top of the mountain after that, close to the house for several years. Um, so that was the first incident. Uh, can I ask you, a few, sorry, can I ask you sure, a few questions? That is really intense. So you, you were pretty much surrounded by Sasquatch. We sudden. were surrounded for a good two and a half to three miles up and down the Creek. I would say there was at least a dozen or more, uh, individuals that, that rang out that night. And that's, I'm, that's what, that's why she was checking her back trail. Do you feel like, that's, that, you know, I, Oh, yeah. Sorry, she, go ahead. No, they didn't know I was in there. They didn't know I was in there or they wouldn't even have showed themselves because uh, we, we hadn't had uh, we've had, you know, strange things happen. You know, you've heard the stuff, you know, bumping on the glass, bumping on the house, uh, you know, throwing stuff up on the porch. Uh, they would leave gifts pretty often. Uh, now, of course, I didn't know this until I got up into Oh, my mid thirties, but my dad had been feeding the dang things. Uh, so he knew about them. He knew, he knew very well about them and he kept them secret even from me. And I was probably the favorite son, you know, we hunted together, fished together. I mean, I was on his side constantly. Uh, and he didn't tell me until, you know, he started getting downhill. Uh, and then he, he told me what he knew and which by that time I had already acquired a mass of, of information on the things. I want to say Just real, to being out in the woods. real quick to the listener for context of where we're talking. Uh, this is, uh, you already said, uh, this is Pittsburgh County, and this is two counties yep, to the west of LaFleur County in Oklahoma, just so people realize. It. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of mining, uh, coal mining that went on, and that particular mountain had lots of old mines and stuff in it. A lot of them were collapsed at the entrance, but I'm sure if you knew the woods better than I did, you know, you probably knew where to get in and they probably hit it too. You know, they're, they're not dumb animals. I mean, when, when they'll climb up and stick a, a deer in the top of a 175 foot red oak tree and it's 75 foot off the ground and all you can see is the head sticking over the top and there ain't no claw marks on it. What done it? Is that something you've you've seen yourself? Yeah, they, they do it a lot down there. They stick them down there all the time. That's nothing. You'd be walking. What's that smell? If you don't look up, you're probably not going to notice it. But nine times out of ten, it's one of their. They put it in the, the deal. And the reason I believe they do that is because of all the bears. I don't. I don't have any proof on that though. But that they they like to stick them in the trees up there, or down there, I should say. Here they don't do that. They kill it and. It's it's probably eat that night down in Arbuckle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. gotcha. You, you, do you think your your father had 
interactions with the Sasquatch back when you were 13? Like, it sounded like he knew what was going on. Oh, yeah. He, 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 uh, he had other incidences. My parent, my, my, my sister, uh, had an incident, uh, with my mom, my dad, they were camped out down at McGee Creek before the lake had even like, filled up. Really? Uh, and it screamed. Now they didn't, they didn't come into camp that they said it just the scream. Uh, my sister run off into the, uh, the tent and, and, uh, they, they left out that morning, the, you know, the following morning or they moved camp. So what dad said, what year uh, he was said, that? yeah, Oh, this is going to be seventies, early seventies. Oh, I've talked to multiple people about McGee, McGee Creek, and it's it's a very it's a dangerous place. crazy hot spot. Dangerous, it's dangerous. They're 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 crazy down there. Them squatches are dangerous. Uh, don't trust them. Uh, I, I'm I'm assuming it's because of all the people in and around the public there. That's the only thing I could think of. Because where you don't have a whole lot of people, you don't have a whole lot of anger. Uh, or or if they're in town, uh, there's a lot of places like Sulphur. They, they come into town quite a bit. Uh, at, at night, and another place, another town north of uh, Sulphur Falls Valley, which is straight up I-35, and it sits right on the Washita River. Most of your fast food is within a quarter mile to a half mile of the riverbanks, and it's all open on the the town side. You know, it's all fields pretty much. Uh, and I've actually seen them driving down the road, early crack of daylight morning. You know, just barely make everything out. You know, if you see deer out there, four or five hundred yards, you can see a deer. But there's no cows where these were at, uh, and it was just past the high school too. Uh, there's a slough uh, right there, and they were they were right on the, the deal of it, and they were sitting up there, and there was three of them, um, big, and they were all black as far as I could tell. But they their color varies as the sun hits it a little bit, so uh, black would probably be the color with low light, you know. What have you heard from McGee Creek that makes you think that? That area is, is so dangerous for Sasquatch. Uh, well, there's people that's been missing and still missing for the last 50, 60 years down there. It just doesn't happen a whole lot. It's not like some of the – it doesn't get as, publicity, as much publicity because of its region. You know, it's a small town. Everybody's pretty tight-knit. If you don't know anybody, you're probably not going to get on a place unless you have a bunch of cash. You know, and money talks down there because they're poor. You know, it's just logging industry for the most part down there sure. and deer hunting. Leases, you know, that's what they do. Do you know of a place called Booger Hollow? Sure. There's also a place on you follow, like you follow that we call uh, Booger Bottoms. Uh, and it, it's a creek. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's got a lot of cattails in towards the mouth of it. But once you get about a mile and a half back up in the creek from off the lake, you, you're in prime territory. Uh, you'll you'll have something happen usually within two or three nights there. And, lake, and, I, I grew up and graduated oh, out of Crowder. Okay. So I mean, I know that lake, all that region down through there, plumb down to to, to Eagle Town, plumb down to you know the, the Red River. Uh, we we all over it. So you're <sighs> saying that in Booger Hollow, you you're there two or three nights, you'll have stuff happen, or do you mean the bottoms? The bottoms, Booger Bottoms, okay. down on Lake Eufaula. Okay. Yeah. Have you heard anything yep. specifically about uh, that has happened in Booger Hollow? Uh, not specifically. Okay. I, I don't know a whole lot of people there. Uh, the people that I knew, I was a kid, uh, old man Jelly that lived down around Red Oak. Uh, that place has squatches on it. And he he, uh, he told us they was when the first time we come in there camping. Uh, he says, I'll tell you something, guys, don't you be shooting my wild people. I kind of thought that funny. My dad knew what it meant. You know, he'd been in there several times, but Jelly come in there and kind of warned us kids not to be shooting anything on two legs. So he, he, well, he said, I don't, I, he actually said, don't yeah, go shooting my wild people. Yeah. Wow. Uh, his, his daughter, uh, went, no, nah, I probably better not tell that. <laughs> and, and, uh, we'll just, we'll just, we'll just put it this way. They're related. Okay, we'll put it that way. There's there's a relation there. We'll leave we'll that where that it is. Uh, country, if yeah. and as yeah. we're talking, if there's anything you need me to cut out, I will cut it out afterwards. So don't feel like you're you're gonna get trapped. Like, uh, I, I'll edit well, anything out. I'm, yeah, most it's pretty well general knowledge down around her part. Okay. I mean, they know. Uh, 
uh, it, you know, if you come to the house and your family, you're going to see it. Uh, you know, it, it stays in the house. We'll just put it that way. Uh, so, but yeah, they, they can, they can mix. We'll just put it that way. And that's, and that's a thing we can't talk about. Yeah, we can't talk about that. We don't need to talk oh. about that. Government doesn't need to hear about that. Oh boy. Okay. And they probably already know. Yeah. We'll, we'll leave that there, but you can pretty much yeah. get it. All right. Well, let's move on then. Um, wow. Same, same County. Two years later, uh, now I had seen seen them, uh, just you know, 100, 200 yards, just stuff moving through the woods. You know, nothing, nothing aggressive, uh, nothing that I would be overly concerned about. I mean, we were still taking game, and uh, you know, when we was growing up, uh, you, you brought game home every time you come in, you know, or or you may not got to eat that night. Uh, some weeks, <laughs> you know, just depends. It was tight, uh, but. Uh, so we was deer hunting. I was sitting on the same fence line. Matter of fact, it was the very same tree stand. Uh, a deer had come down through there, uh, and then another deer, then another deer, just kind of normal. Uh, then finally, the deer I wanted to shoot, nice, nice ten point, you know, probably 130 inch. You know, back then in the, in the early 90s, it was that was a big deer. Uh, now it ain't so much, uh, but I was I was glad to shoot it. And well, I shot it. I seen it fall, you know, 55, 75 yards down through there. Uh, I've seen it tip over, uh, but it, about five minutes later, I also heard something walk, walk where the thing had screamed at. And what what there is, uh, let me give you a little better picture. It's a great big bend in the creek, uh, makes a great big wide horseshoe in the creek there. And where it starts to swing back, there's probably three and a half acres of river cane in there, uh, and there's big tunnels. I always thought the pigs had done it because the pigs used it quite a bit too. Uh, after I got a little older, I learned not to go around the, the river cane so much. Uh, they they kind of like to hang out in there in the daytime. Uh, so that thing come out of the river cane. Uh, I didn't see it, but I, I could see my dad coming because he heard me shoot. He was, you know, four or 500 yards away back on the other end of the the uh, horseshoe there, um, sitting on another bottleneck. But, well, he, he was walking down through there. He was pushing deer my way, hogs my way. I didn't shoot anything else. And, he looked up at me and said, get it? I said, yeah, I think something picked up, though. And he looked at, well, let's come on. We'll just go to the house. Said, no, no, it's a big deer. We're, we're going we're gonna to go see if we can't see it anyways and maybe scare it. Maybe it'll drop it. That's, and that's not the best idea. I was pretty stubborn. You know, I had a, I had a rifle in my hand. I thought I was, you know, tough. Uh, we, we pursued on uh, s- several hundred yards, turned into about three and a half miles. Uh, once we got into the area, we crossed the big slough that the, uh, the water treatment plant had uh, made because the, the pipe leaked real bad. It's, they've since destroyed the, that old water treatment plant and everything. But So it's kind of dried up back in there now a little bit. Uh, but once we crossed that, that main creek that fed it in, into it, uh, I know where it was going because that's where the, the coal mines and stuff was at. And, I mean, we could see it two or three times, you know, 75 yards, 110 yards, just depending on the brush down through there. You know, it's kind of kind of open along the creek once you got 30, 40 yards off the creek or the floodplain didn't clear it out every, you know, every time it got up. Uh, it was much, much thicker. Uh, and it was it was traveling the edge of that. Uh, so the tracks was pretty easy most of the time in that bottom land. Uh, it was leaving tracks about three and a half to four inches deep where me and dad was only leaving about an eighth of an inch, just barely making marks, you know considerably big um that's man we shouldn't we shouldn't be going after that's a big track Wes. i said oh, well we got to do something i said this bull crap i said bernie can't even kill a deer because um i said they follow him around like crazy and that's yeah well you know it is what it is it's, it's just how you live with them you just don't do nothing and they don't do nothing said, yeah well we're doing something because he done something uh we we ended up tracking it up there and we could hear multiple animals uh, on this flat uh, just below the where this mine was at. Uh, I said, I don't know, Dad. That's, that's kind of crazy. He said, man, just, he said, don't take your gun if you're going to walk up there. He says, make sure you let them know you're coming. So we're, we haven't even crossed the creek yet, and a whistle goes out. So we've already been made. I just said, hey, that's my deer. And I heard it sounded like a herd of elephants standing up and running up up the deal we could see a few of them going through the cedars and and you know the oak and stuff um but 
there were several that didn't. Uh, so we, we, you know, I, I went ahead and took a couple steps. And when I did, it stopped over the side. And I mean, when it roared, it, it literally moved the hair on my head and face. Uh, it was loud. I said, Hey, that's my deer. And, and it looked at me again and roared and it looked at dad and seen the gun. And then it really roared. I mean, this thing, you, you almost, it was almost so much. It made you nauseous because of the vibration on the inside of you. If that makes sense to you, uh, it almost turned our stomachs. It was that loud. Uh, of course I'm shaking. I said, if that thing makes a move, just shoot it in the head, dad. And, and of course, dad, I don't know whether he heard me or not. I took two steps up and to where I could see up on the flat and I pointed to the deer and it looked at the deer, looked at me, snarled. I looked back at the deer. That's my deer. And I, I reached to go grab another limb, take a step up and it, well, dad shot, uh, and missed it, uh, about an inch and a half. Well, he looked at my dad and tapped its head like, damn, that was close. You know, I mean, the, the thing had fear in its eyes. I said, mine, I said, mine, that's mine. I got to eat too. You know, and it looked at me like it understood what I was wanting, and all I got was a leg. Uh, it stepped over there within about two steps. It was probably 12, 13 yards from him, but two steps or so, bent over, tore the back leg off, and slung it right into my chest and set me right back into the creek. That said, take your leg, get your gun, let's go. And we were escorted out from the ridge line. We they were they were making a point to show that to be seen up on that ridge line and they followed us up to to the uh, high line that goes down off in there that we took in and out and at that point they stopped and when we went up the hill they turned around and went back down and after that we it was it we wasn't so much being harassed as it was uh every time we come to the woods they were always there i mean it was you just couldn't get away from them i don't care where you went they knew you was there it was crazy. I mean, it was, it, that's it. As long as they're not hurting you and not attacking, he says, just keep doing your deal. He says, they're just checking you out. And so that's what we did. And dad said, uh, well, I had one. Um, that's, no, it was the next year, that following February, after they took the deer. Uh, we, I was fishing the slough pond back there, catching channel cat uh, on stink bait. And it was cold, cold, cold. And I don't know, I had probably 25, 30 catfish, you know, nobody going to regulate a, you know, a young man or how many fish he had. Uh, and I was just about getting ready to go. And I mean, I had another little old bite there and I, I picked up the rod. When I picked up the rod, uh, a hand reached out of the brush because the brush was just cleared by beavers. You know, it wasn't much, you know, a couple of foot wide tops before you stepped into, you know, eight to 20 foot tall saplings that were so thick that cottontails couldn't get in it. Uh, I never heard nothing. I never saw nothing. I never smelt nothing until the hand touched me on the shoulder and, and rolled me back. And he just picked it, picked my stringer up with two fingers, mind you, smiled real big and, and walked off. I thought, well, crap. That sucks. That's a lot of work. I mean, I had a heck of a stringer catfish. Uh, so I, I, I just, well, I don't know nothing else to do. I just start catching fish. Dad told me to bring fish home you know i still had plenty of time i started catching more fish i, I don't know 10 or 11 more catfish and i went to the house uh carrying them on sticks i'd strung them up that's what i had to use uh as i come around the bend in this access road that come off from the uh old water treatment plant there's my stringer hanging up in the tree wow so i strung up my fish and went on about my rat killing to the house i told dad dad said don't tell mom uh, he said, you might probably, probably shouldn't go catfishing for a while down there. He said, it might be kind of tough for him right now. So he said, they might just soon take you instead of the catfish. I said, well, he smiled when he took them and he was real polite. That's what do you mean? He was polite. I said, he only used two fingers and held his pinky out like he was drinking a cup from an Englishman. He said, you're kidding. I said, nope. I said, he turned around and walked off. I said, and it wasn't the big guy. He says, oh, I said, so what was it? A female? I said, no, it was a male. Uh, that I know for sure, because it was standing right over the top of me, pretty much. Uh, he said, oh, well, he smiled at you. I said, he smiled. He said, I said, there's a stringer. He gave me a stringer back. By the time I caught my fish and made it around, you know, I told him the story. And he just like, yeah, from this point on, just start leaving half of everything you take from the woods. So if you shoot 30 squirrels, 15 of it goes to them. 
And so that's what we started doing, or I started doing. And at this point in time, you know, Dad was, he always told me he was chumming the creek, but I think he was taking the hog pellets down there and feeding the dang squatches. I really do. It sounds like you got a really good look at the face of the Sasquatch at multiple times. Can you describe yeah, anything you, else a lot, that a lot you, you saw? Guys get it, uh, a lot of you guys get it so wrong. I've never seen anything that looked even remotely close to a gorilla. Uh, it's a, it's a freaking Neanderthal is what it is. That's what it is. It's a Neanderthal. I don't care if the bones tell you different. It's a, it's a big giant Neanderthal. It looks just like a Neanderthal. It's a man. I mean, there's no, there's no, it's got a big bulbous nose. Some of them are flat. I mean, uh, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a Neanderthal. That's what it is. Just big, just big. You know, I got to hand it to your father. Uh, he, it sounds like in, in all these accounts, he is reacting with just a calmness to him, but also you can tell that he has had some interactions over the years. Like he knows about them a lot. He was not surprised yes, by it, much. Yeah. I figured probably since the fifties or sixties, uh, cause he had made mention that when he was a little kid, uh, he shot a bear in the, uh, tabletops, which is, uh, West of Elmore city and a little North, uh, and uh, he said it was a honey bear. He said, but the honey bear was 11 foot long. I was like, yeah, well, what was you drinking, Dad? He said, no, I wasn't drinking, and I don't think it was a bear. He said it crawled off in the brush, and I turned around, and I left. I said, oh. He said he went back and looked to see if it, but the, he could never get off in that brush pile. You know, He said when it crawled off in the brush pile, it raised it up. So when Dad says brush pile, he means probably something pushed by a bulldozer or something on my dad a big, you know, a, a pile of trees. Wow. And this is yeah. in Pittsburgh County. Uh, no, this, that would, I'm not real sure what County that is. That's in the tabletops where that, where he had that happen. Uh, what we, what I've been discussing right now has been in the Pittsburgh. Gotcha. I, I, the only places I've had any, any, uh, sightings in Oklahoma has been Pittsburgh, uh, the couple down in, in um, McIntosh County, which is above it on the river, uh, that we was coming out of the woods and they crossed out in the field. There was two of them, a big one and a little one. Uh, I would say mom and a, a young one, you know, uh, didn't get a great look at them. Just, you could just tell it was what it was, you know, it's, I mean, down there, that's, those things are fairly common. I mean, you no, know, most folks ain't going to talk about them, but yeah, a lot of folks see them down there a lot, way more than it's coming out. Every time that you've seen them, has it come to your mind that, hey, this looks like a Neanderthal? Or have there been times where they've every looked time, a, every, every time. time? Okay. Every time. Every time. They, they look like a Neanderthal. Big, big, crusty uh, forehead. You know, it's big. It's very masculine, uh, very thick. The jaws are thick, very square. Teeth are square. Never seen canines in them. I mean, they got canines, but they look just like ours. There, there's not much there. I mean, it's not like, I don't know where these folks is getting the three inch fangs and stuff at, uh, maybe a different thing. I don't know. Uh, but I, I mean, Jimmy, Christmas, when you sit down and eat deer jerky with them, I think I know what they look like. I mean, so yeah, <laughs> let's, let's talk about that then. Um, so you have actually sat down with some individuals. And uh, I was, I was homeless, uh, uh, several years back, uh, here in, uh, Garvin County, uh, one of my dad's friends, uh, I just kind of, I didn't really ask. I just kind of popped the tent and made my, made my place there. You know, I hunted on it, fished on it. I know that'd be okay. As long as that's the only place I had to go. And it, yeah, I did. That was the only place I had to go at the time. Uh, so I'm, I don't know. I've been there ooh, a month or two. Nope, nothing. I ain't seen nothing. I ain't heard nothing. I never felt nothing. Um, you know, never smelt nothing. Never seen tracks. Uh, all of a sudden, one night, there was a whoop down on the bottom. I whooped back like a dummy. And it come up there. And at, from then on, uh, it was up there almost every night. And it sat and it watched. That's all it done. It just sat on its haunches and it watched. 
I uh, so, uh, I don't know, several, several weeks went by, uh, hadn't had no, nothing out of it, you know, it hadn't had really seen it in a week or so, uh, in the daylight, I'll put it that way in the daylight. Uh, you can hear it walking around outside out in the grass and stuff, but you couldn't see it with no light. Uh, well, I decided, uh, I was going to go down to the, the pond, which is, uh, about a hundred, 120 yards uh, straight in front of me, heading back towards Paul's Valley. Matter of fact, towards the river. Uh, so I went down there fishing, and it's it had a few smaller fish in it. it Need to be culled out a little bit, you know. Hadn't been harvested enough, you know, out of it over the years. So I was throwing the fish over the the bank, and the when this bank is so oh, 65 foot to the bottom of the ravine down there, uh, but it's nice grade, you know. It's it was built. Uh, so I'm just tossing over my back, not thinking much of it. And I hear something down there. Oh, there's a deer or something in in behind me. And uh, it said it said one more. And when it said one more, I just set my rod down and looked over. You know, climbed up the bank there and looked over, and it was sitting there. Uh, the same thing that had been sitting there watching me every night. It said one more and give me one finger. I thought, what the hell? Uh, so I, I dropped back over the deal and said, okay. You know, I was kind of shooken up. Uh, as long as you're eating the fish and not me, we're cool. Uh, you know, so I, I pitched another great big perch over him. This time he hopped up around top of the bank and was sitting there. Uh, and he waited for the fish this time. I thought, Jiminy Christmas. I said, you, I just kind of looked at him and he didn't look mad or nothing. He just was wiggling his toes, uh, waiting on the next fish. I mean, that's the, he looked like he was anticipating a meal. I mean, for free. Like I had nothing, no problems with him or nothing, you know, like he, he knew me from day one. I mean, that's the way he was treating me. Uh, so I, I kept catching fish and when I throwed the big crappie in the basket, he kind of grunted at me. I said, Oh, I got to eat too. And, uh, he walked down there and looked in the basket and picked him up and looked at me and he set the basket back down. And he, he's, he kind of walked in a little closer in behind me and sat down. I kept fishing, kept fishing, finally caught a nice crappie. I tossed it up there to him this time. And, uh, he eat it up, got up, didn't say nothing, didn't make a noise, and just walked off into the to the woods, plumbed down to the river where I couldn't hear him no more. And I didn't see him for three or four days. <laughs> so the next encounter was probably, let's see, I went to church that Sunday, so I guess it was Tuesday night. Uh, the wife, my my now wife, uh, she come out and brought me dinner and everything, and she's going to stay the night. Uh, so she stayed the night. She got up to pee. Uh, she screamed. I mean, that's all there was to it. She'd never seen one. Uh, so I stuck my head out the window, the deal, and said, uh, "What's a, oh, hey, big guy. And uh, he turned and just walked off. She come back into the tent and sat back down. She was pretty shaken. Says, I think I'm just going to leave. Uh, it's okay. She says, you going to go? I said, nah, you don't bother me none. I said, me and him have been hanging out. I said, he's all right. I said, uh, I'll let you know. So, you know, if he gets worse or anything like that, or he gets to being a, per- a turd. And uh, he said, okay, well, I, I think I'm going to leave. I, I can't be around those. That thing was hideous. I said, yeah, they're pretty ugly. I said, they're, if you're not used to it, you know, uh, they're pretty scary. And so she left, and uh, I, di- I didn't see him that night. Uh, well, anyways, uh, I was cooking deer leg, uh, you know, pieces of it on the on the grill and it come up and when it come up it looked up and saw the meat and it just kind of pointed at the meat i just kind of waved it on over well, it stopped turned around and whistled and made a little clicky noise and kind of a mm, i don't know what you would call it a little, a little gargle type sound and and i heard two other things sit down i thought what in the world so uh i, I handed him all the meat that was on the, the deal there and he kept looking over at the rest of the deer. I said, just take what you want, you know. And he, he pulled the whole deer right off into the woods. Oh, dang, that ain't cool. And so, so it didn't even leave me any meat because I done give him what was already on the grill. Mm. Uh, so well, he come back, and, and he brought some of my deer back, okay. The front two legs is all I got off that deer. Well, I peeled it off of there, and, uh, you know, I got my belly full anyways and made jerky out of the rest of it. That's what I stayed up doing the, the rest of the night. Uh, next morning, he was sitting up there at camp waiting on me to get up and looking at the, looking at the jerky. Oh, uh, well, crap, that's my breakfast. And he looked over at me, and he just kind of kind of 
up on his toes and down like, hi, how you doing? Didn't say nothing, didn't grunt, didn't do nothing, didn't no hand gesture, just and looked right back to me. And I walked over there and I got me a piece and handed it to him. He just plopped down and just grabbed a couple more pieces off of there and then whistled. And when he whistled, uh, there was four more coming out of the woods. Uh, they were one female and two smaller ones. Uh, one was probably the smaller of the two was probably about four and a half foot. And the other one was about six. Uh, the mama was right at about eight and he was sitting in about nine and a half, ten foot massive from five and a half foot of the shoulders. Mm. Uh, probably a good three and three and a half, almost four at the hips. Big, 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 big boy. Big boy. Wow. And uh, he, 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 the big guy, he, he didn't like me. He, he just, he sat and just was showing teeth the whole time. Uh, I'd look over and he'd turn his head and <laughs> like that, you know, um, not aggressive, but I would say that he, he wasn't very interested in being there. Uh, but somebody else was up there getting food for him. So he come up there. This went on. It, they, they pestered me every night after that. I mean, it was, they'd come up, whistle, tap on the tent. Uh, if I wouldn't get out of the tent, the big guy would unzip the tent, hold the door open, and the, the guy that I was feeding, uh, he would jerk me out by my ankle. Not hard. Just grab him and pull me out and, and hip clap, do something, you know. He, he wanted to he wanted to hang out. Uh, you know, of course, I let him go through everything. You know, they didn't find no food, lost interest in me, and they'd shove off. Uh, this, this went on almost nightly to every other couple four nights or so there'd be a day or two they'd be they wouldn't be there and i'd get some sleep uh it got to the point where i was sleeping in the daytime and up with them their jerks of a night uh it was crazy it, they well that wasn't all of them that's the thing that wasn't all of them there was nine total uh one male uh very large uh probably 11 foot uh very long haired uh silver silver white no hand on one on one side on his left side matter of fact no it hands. was gone about mid four no no hand lost of scars whoa so i figured he was the top alpha before that's kind of what i thought so that means there's other ones around there well anyways uh they got to where they was learned how to open my truck up uh that was interesting i come into camp from going and taking a shower up the road at the the local city lake uh, and, uh, I come back and everything in my truck was tore out clothes, food, uh, what they didn't like. They just stomped it. I saw, gee whiz. Uh, then the, one of the females come in there and she tried to tell me who it was, but she was pointing at tracks and, you know, and, and I, I didn't pay much attention to the tracks. I was seeing them every day, you know, uh, you kind of lose interest in tracks when you got the thing sitting there, you know, mm. I want to go back to something you said. So you said there was a time where your tent was unzipped and it dragged you out of the tent. Yeah, it, no, it, it was zipped. The The biggest male, he unzipped it, held the door right. open, just held the flap open. And the one that was friendly to me, he reached in there every time by the ankle, very gently and would just pull, you know, just like you used to pull your kid across the floor right on out. Of course, you know, it got to be kind of comical for a while. And then it got to be kind of annoying when, you know, you know, he, you just didn't want to get up. You tell him no, and he would be a little more forceful. And then it got to where he was rolling me out across the deal some nights, you know, because I didn't, well, I was having to use and wasn't feeling good. Uh, so this went on. The wife seen him, I don't know, numerous times uh, in and out, daytime, nighttime. I mean, it didn't matter. Uh, the, the guy that owns it. He swears up and down there's nothing in there, uh, but yet he he won't uh, come and mow anymore over there. I do all the mowing. Okay. So uh, yeah, and it is, and this happened uh, when uh, after I had moved out. He he, he I'm thinking that he drove in and thought it was they thought it was me and they stepped out in the road. That's kind of what I'm thinking because I mean that's how it got to be when I tr pull in the truck. I mean they was already coming out to meet me. I mean it was crazy. Wow. That is but you got to see that this place is thick. I mean, it's thick, you know, and it's, there's houses, uh, all around me, except for along the river. I mean, 
it's crazy. And then, I mean, they butt right up in town. I mean, they come up to the lake occasionally and, you know, and, and mess around the lake coast. He's got stores. So, which is pretty common. I mean, this, this is the same area that they found, uh, the Paul's Valley giant skeletons. Matter of fact, I'm about, uh, three quarters of a mile from the exact location where they found them. And, um, I'm not familiar with, with that, but I could probably guess a very large skeleton that was found. I'm guessing numerous, very large skeletons, six toes, six fingers. These, these only have five though. The, so, the creatures that you were with only had five. Yeah. They only have five. Only have five. Okay. Very interesting. Did you ever try to take Those, a picture of them, or did you have? Uh, a well, every time you pull your phone out, uh, it, it kind of stirs up problems. Okay. Uh, there would be some squawking amongst the males, and uh, they, they would try to take the phone away from you and destroy it. Sure. And I got I got banged up pretty good, you know, trying to get my phone, keeping from getting it because it was ringing. Uh, so they're, they're highly intelligent, highly intelligent. Yeah. Uh, well, I, at this point in time, they had made no, no communications other than hand gestures, pointing stuff like that. Uh, I'm going to get my tea. <laughs> wow. When I started having the seizures in front of them, they were much, they started talking to me and pampering me and stuff and bringing me food and, they knew I was sick, you know. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, they know English. It's not, it's not like me and you talk it. It's pretty, pretty uh, plain, lame, very uh, simple, you know. Me this, me that, you this. You know, they understand that. And I think they understand more. They just don't say it. Mm. Uh, but they have their own language. Uh, I know. I know they speak Cherokee. Because uh, I've heard them do it down there in Pittsburgh County. Uh, you know, we had school, and they taught Cherokee in our school uh, for several years there. And so I picked up on the Cherokee, and I heard them talking it in the woods. Uh, so, but the place, the, this place I'm talking about, I got to see a lot of cool stuff. Uh, they hunted rattlesnakes. This place is eat up with timber rattlers. Uh, that was a, a main staple that I could sit in camp and have a rattlesnake every day or two or three, and if the neighbors mowed, which was directly in behind me, yards away, uh, there was a big wall of the brush and stuff and green briars and, and uh, uh, multi-floral rose bush that kind of blocked the view. Uh, but uh, when they mowed, the snakes come crawling out of the brush. Uh, so, and I'd get them when they got to the mow park, whack them in the heads, get them out. That was lunch, you know, uh, pretty easy. For yourself? Well, yeah, for myself, mm. for myself, yeah. yeah. They, because a lot of times it was super hot, and they would, they would, they would kind of when it got real, real hot, you wouldn't see them. They just, they wouldn't be up there on top of on the sun. I don't know where they went. Like I said, I wasn't getting around good in the woods to to follow them around and stuff. Not much, anyways. Mm. <laughs> we walk down the pond or something like that. Walk up down the creek. Easy, the easy walk and stuff. You know, I think they kind of knew. Do you? Oh, Go ahead. I have a question. It this might be a totally uh, left left turn or, or something like that. But, um, you know, you, you said you're in, you're about in your early forties. Um, were you involved or had any interactions with people that were involved with the siege that happened about 20 years ago? Uh, no comment. No comment. Oh, okay. I respect that. All right. That's, Fair enough. Uh, that, uh, we, we signed stuff, so no comment. Yeah. <laughs> we, we hunted them, okay? I, I hunted them for a long time. This is I hunted them before. This, this is what we're talking about right now. Uh, I've shot dozens of them. You, so you, you, okay, so you have you have hunted uh, Sasquatch and uh, actually— That's how I get so close to— Because, uh, uh, well— uh, Let's put it this way. It's just as good as they are in the woods. I can be just as good, if not better. Sure. And you've dispatched of multiple is what you're saying. Yes. Uh, for a while there, it was, it was well known. That's what I've done. Uh, you know, and people would call me out of the blue. They'd have problems. 
uh, you know, you, you know, what's, you, you've heard the stories, uh, raiding the houses, tearing it up, you know, causing problems with the, the family. Uh, yeah. So we shot those things. Uh, there was an Indian, a Cree Indian who used to live down the road for me that we traded quite a bit. You know, he was an older man. He drank a lot, but, uh, he showed me, he says, uh, he, he says, I noticed you, and things like to follow you and your dad around down there. Of course, I didn't know he even knew that, you know, they was following us. I said, uh, what things? He said, you know what I'm talking about. He says, let me show you how to call them things up. And he, he showed me how to do it. But he also made a uh, uh, a concoction uh, of, of animal parts. And he'd burn it on the fire till it was um, a goo. Uh, add water to it, and then you let it steam off of there and let it boil down to pretty much nothing. Uh, and when it started smoking in the bottom of the pan, uh, it wouldn't be very long if the, if the wind was right. Uh, if they smelt it, they were, they were going to come. And it, it was uh, always brought an aggressive, always a brought an aggressive squash every time. They come to fight when, he, when they smell that. Can you go over what was in or – uh, Not really. I, I don't. I, you, none of you guys need to know that. Uh, you're going to get yourselves hurt. Uh, you, you need. You know. You're going to get yourself hurt, and you're going to get killed. Uh, I've been slammed across over two and a half, three miles through the woods by a female. Uh, she had me by my uh, overall straps and was slinging me in through the brush and stuff. Uh, I think she was trying to hijack me. Is what she was trying to do. Uh, but we were trying to kill her. It took us three years to get her, her and two other shot that was causing the problems. You hunted uh, the lady for says th- three years. Yeah, that, that that this particular one that that uh, wore me and Tom out. Uh, yeah, we could come on the property. She wouldn't even sit, and we'd come on the property within ten minutes of being out of the truck. This thing was already flipping out. Didn't matter whether it was dark or daylight. But she had a great big tall mountain up there on top, right on. I mean, right there at the house. I mean, that's where the, it was watching us from. They knew when we come in, come out, and everything else. There, They're like ninjas. <laughs> right. There have been uh, multi- they are. multiple people that have said, and I'm thinking of uh, people that are involved with uh, Area X. They've had uh, the creature in their sights, and they have not been able to pull the trigger because of how it looks. Is that anything that you struggled with, or how are you? Hey, man, to overcome- look, no, no, right, dude. When right, it's right. when it's got a limb, yeah. a, a limb, uh, eleven foot long, eight inches across the base of it, and going to smash your head in, no problem. I'll pull the trigger every time. All right, ain't got no problem. But you're aggressive, I'll kill you. Fair enough. I mean, that, that goes for any man or anything like that. I mean, my life's in fear. Yeah, you're toast. Yeah, if I can get it, I got it. Okay. All right. Um, it's just, uh, yeah. But yeah, they they uh, yeah we, that was a, that was a bad group. After we got those three shot out, uh, it was it, it calmed down. She still has squatches over there, uh, but they sure don't mess with her, uh, nor none of the, the other neighbors. Has there ever been a time? I'm, 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 oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, was has there ever been a time when you were hunting them during that time where it it got really close to being game over for you? Um, no, because I usually took the upper hand 90% okay. of the time. Uh, Fair enough. Um, I, I use reverse tactics. They like to have the high ground, let them have the high ground. Uh, but don't let them get it to, don't, don't let yourself, uh, be open to the high ground. In other words, uh, make it, make, make yourself, uh, hard to get to in that low ground. Uh, use areas that are small type fit into, uh, that's good, good place. Don't even try climbing trees. They can climb it faster than you can even think about. Uh, I mean, and literally swing from it, jump from tree to tree. Uh, there, I seen a squat. I was tracking him. Uh, he, he noticed me. You know, he turned around, and was checking his back. So he saw me. Uh, took about four or five, ten steps, big jump steps, and hopped up on trees and started. And so I couldn't follow his tracks anymore. Uh, he went on through there uh, three, four hundred yards before he ever stopped doing that. Of course, I could see him, hear him, so it didn't really make much difference. He didn't. He couldn't see me. He just knew I was behind him. Wow. 
they, they're very shy. They, they, they don't want to be, they don't want no problems out of us 99% of the time. Sure. Uh, the, where you're, where you're coming in and they're growling at you, that growl is, uh, to get you to get gone. Uh, they they like to intimidate. Uh, they like to bluff. Yeah. Uh, but once, once the, the, the foot stomping's done, uh, and there's no more whistling going on and it's going to whoops, uh, you, you, you wore out your welcome. Uh, it's time to get out. Uh, now not every clan's like that. The clans, I could take you to some clans over here. I guarantee you by the time we walk in, in 20 minutes of setting up, they're already going to be surrounding us and, and jacking with us. Uh, and they're not nice. Uh, we don't go in there very often. So after you would dispatch of one, what would happen to the body? Oh, they snag it up every time. Who would? Every time. They would. The squatches. So they would rush. So you, okay. So you would take one out and they would. If you, if you shot one, yeah. the, uh, I guarantee you there was, there was two or three right there near it. And uh, they would draw your attention off to one side or the other, uh, throwing rocks, something like that. And they would pick it up and, you know, I mean, sometimes you get another shot, two shots, you know, and get right. two or three. Uh, but they always, they always had somebody come pick them up. The one time that we didn't, and uh, this was, this was, well, uh, this was when uh, just shortly before they come in and shot a lot of them. Uh, so I, we turned it in, and man, it was four and a half weeks uh, in the penitentiary, more or less. Uh, on on a government base. I don't know where I was at. Uh, uh, they dropped me off the house. You, so you got taken to a government base for dispatching. Yeah, we, we turned it. We turned it into. We turned it into the the park. Uh, within, I guarantee, you, within two and a half hours, I was already in a van and was was sedated. Really? Snag snag me up right up out of out of my own yard. Didn't even. They pulled, they pulled the country on me is what they've done. I wasn't paying attention <laughs> they, and had my guard let they down. They took country down. Yeah, wow. Oh, man. And so you came to and, and – all, they... all I heard was about about five yards before he got to me because he come around the back side of the the, uh, the shed there. I heard the grass move, and I whirled around, and I was hit. Pow. I mean, that was they hit me with a beanbag charge right inside the head. Why do you think, why do you think they wanted you in that in that government base? Oh, because they, they wanted they wanted me to help, but I didn't want to kill them out. I just I told them I said we only we only hunt problem squatches. I said you go in these mountains, and I said most most of you guys are are just you're going to be pissing in the wind. They're just going to disappear, and you're going to step off in the caves, and that's going to be the end of it. You're not going to find them. Uh, well, they found them. Uh, they shot a lot off the park. Uh, then the following within six eight months of them being done and cleared out, uh, they they cut the cedars. And when they cut the cedars, what what few remained, they moved. Uh, and I'm I'm still I know where that group's at. I just can't get to them because it's on private land, and they won't let me in there. So you're saying oh, there was man, a, a lot? It's chalked off on you. It's chalked. It, oh boy. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Pretty much. You, now you understand why. Kind of, kind of spooky, bad things. But, anyways. So it's it's a Choctaw land and it's landlocked, right? Uh, no, it's Chickasaw land. I'm sorry, I forgot where sorry I was at. It's that's... Chickasaw land. Yeah, Chickasaw. Yeah, the Choctaws on down down south, McGee Creek area. But the Chickasaws uh, but yeah, this are is on Chickasaw, floor, right? Uh, no, they're 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 uh, Murray Garvin okay. County. Uh, that yeah, that's what these are here. Uh. So yeah, uh, they so they got a bunch of lands, you know, just pockets of it. And this is, uh, I'll tell you right where it's at. Uh, they got a big old recreation center just on the other side of the lake, and it's right there. They moved off into them valleys into there, and, and you can still they still come to the lake to hunt at night. Uh, they just don't live there anymore. I just want to verify one more. So you're saying that there is a big group uh, from the base that actually went out. And dispatched this is, this a multiple is, Sasquatch in a time period. Dozens, dozens. At one time, um, me and Charles Hallmark had documented at least 40 different individuals that lived on the park alone on the tavern, tavern team, Guy Sandy side. 
What park is that? Chickasaw National Recreation. Okay, okay. A Tavertine, you know, you go into the town there, one side of the road's Tavertine or Platte National. Uh, I think that's what they call it now. Uh, they renamed it about three times here lately. Uh, so, but yeah, it's the Chickasaw National Recreation Area. That's, and you're not going to see, when you get on the recreation area, you're not going to see a whole lot of squash activity. It's just not there anymore. Uh, Jim Whitehead, I believe he had went up and down Sandy a few times and they got, you know, tracks and whatnot, but you just don't see that anymore. Yeah. Uh, when the lake is low, my best option, if you want to go find tracks would be the, the catfish bottoms area, but the lake needs to be low because it's too rocky. And when the lake gets low, it leaves the silt and they'll, they'll travel the, the silt collecting the duckweed and stuff along the creek bank. Wow. Salt grass. No way else they can find. I've talked to Jim before. He's a great guy. He's got some incredible information from the Western part of the state. Nope. I haven't had the pleasure of meeting him yet. Just, just know, just know where he's been through mainly through Charles, you know, and, and watching him on Facebook and whatnot, you know, here and there. Do you know of any, but, uh, have you heard of any interactions that have happened from LaFleur County itself? Uh, yeah, a couple, uh, they're not much, it's just, you know, they come into camp, leave camp, uh, you know, nothing dangerous or anything like that. Just, just sightings. That's all it is. That's usually all you see over there. Uh, there's a couple of families there, but I know they won't let, will not want to be on that. So I, I'm not sure. going to mention it. But yeah, there's yeah. a couple of families in there. Uh, the Indian families, uh, they own quite a bit of ground back in there. Yeah. Uh, and I think the last 15 years, they quit leasing it out to, to the, all the deer hunters, too. Oh, wow. Uh, so that's a big yeah. deal not to do that because that's a lot of money that gets brought in. Well, I, I think the tribe supplementing them, so. Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, well, then that's out of my knowledge yeah, base, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, that's just, just coming down the grapevine from them, you know. I got you. Uh, so it's, it's been deemed a protected area. <laughs> why do you the think? The Indians don't want to destroy them, you know. Why, they do, they, why do they not want to uh, destroy them, you think? Uh, it's part of their history and culture, sure. my yeah. friend. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, definitely. one of the few things that they can still grasp onto. Mm. Why do you think everything else has been wiped out for them? Why do you think Oklahoma has so many accounts of aggressive Sasquatch? It just seems like it is the epicenter of all that is aggressive in the Bigfoot world. Well, you have to look at the biodiversity. Uh, and we, shoot, 20 years ago, man. Places that I used to hunt and fish are, are now houses. It's it's the, the ground's getting smaller and smaller. Yeah. Uh, so you're having more interactions. Uh, when you have interactions, uh, you you shoot one of the males that don't kill it. But guess what? That male's going to tell every one of the clan members, "Do not hang around people. Wow. Disappear. Just walk away." Yeah. And, and that's how they survive. I mean. You know, if you can remember back in your history days growing up in, in high school or, you know, you, they talked about the evolution, all this. And, and uh, you know, when Crow magnon stepped onto the scene, you know, they kind of they, they, they theorized that it pushed Crow mag or, uh, you know, uh, the Neanderthals back into the higher elevations, uh, into the more remote areas. Uh, so, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory. You do that for, you know, 20,000, 30,000 years, uh, you know. Mm. But uh, you know, a lot of a lot of native tribes said it, uh, they didn't become aggressive for the most part. I mean, they you know there was some like everybody. There's different tribes and different clans, and and, uh, and now I'm learning that there's different squatches. Uh, you know, I only thought there was two different kinds: the the nice kind and the bad kind. The right. bad kind was always red in color. I mean. Every bad, every every terrible interaction I've ever had with a dangerous squatch, red. Every last stinking one of them. Really? Yes. The the black ones, uh, I've had some, I've had some close encounters, but they always let me walk away. They never pursued it. Once I turned and turned my back to them, they 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 let it be. Did you ever hear of any that were four toed? Uh, well, we shot a three toed one. It had three toes and three fingers. Okay. Uh, on, on, it, it, that's 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 the only different one 
that I ever seen, but it was also red and gray. Uh, its eyes were much bigger. Uh, it didn't have coloration in the eyes. It was almost a solid black, mm. uh, very little white around the eyes. Uh, they did not have the, uh, the like the mustache, uh, like they, like the, the, my squatch has got, mm. I call them wood apes. I don't call them squashes. They're wood apes. So that's very uh, interesting. Cause they, they act, they act like a damn ape. They are an ape, but yet they're not. I mean, for one minute they could be an ape and the next minute they could be a man. I mean, you know what I'm saying? In the way they, they, they act, if that makes sense, not in the way they look, but the way they act. So that's really uh, curious. You know, Cause so earlier you were like, it looks like a Neanderthal, but you're saying there's some very intense ape behavior that is also happening as well. Yes. Very, very intense. Uh, it's, it's almost textbook chimp slash gorilla. Uh, like a lot, like a lot of times when the chimpanzees, uh, they get excited. Uh, they, <laughs> you know, they do that real fast. And the squatches do that too. And, but it doesn't mean that they're always going on a hunt. It just means that they're excited. Or, or, or uh, that's, that's kind of a, uh, oh, man, that's not good. It's, you know, kind of an alert. I need to get out of here type thing, you know, and it's letting the other uh, squatches around know. Uh, yeah, but, but the way they set up here in the arbuckles is not like how they set up back home back home they set up sentinels uh and you didn't get with if the the sentinels were out and you got within the sentinels the sentinels pushed you back you you just you know they would they would uh they would make it known that you wasn't supposed to be there they would either escort you out or they'd throw stuff at you you know and to get you to turn around make noises sure. uh you know different stuff like that uh these here they don't do that uh once it hits daylight poof, they, they they get back off in the mountains and they're they're not going to be out and about they're not going to sit up on top of the cliffs and stuff and be looking out it's just too bald and open and i think that's the main reason they don't how but the arbuckles have a monster cave system underneath really it. okay massive wow. massive do you think they utilize massive. that oh definitely definitely yes. did back home i don't know i don't know why they don't hear i mean i've not i've not run across the I haven't run across the, I know where the cave is at. I just can't get to it. We'll put it that way. Mm -hmm. uh, they just don't let you get nowhere near it. I mean, it's just, they just won't. How do they stop you it's from because, getting to it? Oh, they come out to see you. Uh, really? They make it known this particular place. Yeah. This place is the same place that uh, the owner won't come within a mile and a half of this particular mountain. He owns probably, hmm, I think he said seven and a half square miles in there. So uh, he's got a pretty good chunk of land. And so the mountain but is he, the he watches. That mountain is, I, I can hunt the bottom of it, uh, but I ever get close to the, to the base of it, uh, I get escorted out every time. And, and if you have a long rifle with it, yeah, you're going, <laughs> that's asking for trouble with these guys. Sure. Uh, that they're going to, they pick up bigger rocks instead of throwing stuff the size, you know, hickory nut size. They pick up stuff the size of baseballs, up to basketballs and junk at you when you have a rifle. They absolutely don't like them. Um, and I tell everybody, when we go in there, don't carry a long, a long weapon. You know, put it on your side, 454, 44 Magnum, you know. Uh, don't you put hollow points in it because it ain't going to penetrate, uh, you know. Right. So When you've been out there with – the big big for the squatches have you ever heard anything that did not make sense why am i hearing this in this situation right now any speech i don't or, wanna... or just any uh i've, I've never oh, well let, let me get into this i've okay. never seen a ufo uh i've never seen orbs uh around them uh never never now I have seen orbs uh, on Lake Eufaula one night. We was catfishing, and it was okay. oh I don't it was it was big. Uh, it was kind of orange color, and it shot across the sky, and it turned real like it wasn't a plane. You know, it was huge, uh, but it didn't nothing ever occurred. But when it flew across the water, it moved the water. Mm -hmm. That's what we couldn't get because it, it pushed the water. You know, it put a, a ripple across the water out in front of it and then behind it, and it was a hundred foot in the air, better. Uh, and then I've seen, I've seen little orbs dancing around, uh, down like in the swampy areas, you know, uh, but in swamp gas, I've seen swamp gas light up at night and that's pretty neat. 
uh it's kind of creepy uh he's like well what's going on <laughs> but that's all it is i want to get towards it and smell it you know what it is uh but yeah i've never i've never seen the orbs and stuff that, i mean uh they don't disappear like everybody says they are i'm telling you they're ninjas they're the ninjas, ninjas. Yeah, sure. they they're not, they're not spirits uh trust me if it bleeds it dies uh, spirits don't bleed spirits don't die i got it have you ever heard? Yeah, there might be other stuff out there in the woods. Go ahead. Have you ever heard a baby's cry when you've been out there? Yes, I have had to babysit. Uh, this place here, uh, the place that we've been talking about, uh, up here where I'm at now, north of me, uh, I've been asked, or not asked, and she just tossed it up there in the tent and looked at me and shook its finger at it, uh, which I kind of figured that meant not to get out, you know. And it looked at me and it shook a finger and it kind of, you know, not let it out, you know. And they went hog hunting. Uh, they, they ended up coming back with a couple of hogs. It didn't take them long, maybe 45 minutes, because uh, they were sitting in camp. Uh, they heard the hogs scream down on the river. Uh, one of them went, oh, and four or five of them started discussing something amongst themselves. And she got up, bought the kid over there, dropped it in the tent. And you can smell my tent right now. It still smells like it. Uh, I can't wash it and get the smell out for some reason. Uh, so, so there but was a, there, you know, a baby Sasquatch. Was, you're saying yes. When I say yeah. baby, I mean like three foot tall, uh, able to walk, able to hop, uh, but you know it's still pretty weak. The cutest button. I mean, uh, their fingernails are are white when they're small. Their fingertips are, are you know, their their palm is Caucasian looking. You know, their hairs or the skin's Caucasian, and it darkens up as they get older. It gets a more melanistic color to it. What do their teeth look like? Just flat and flat and uh, white. Uh, they actually chew several different roots to clean them. Believe it or not, and just like they're just like ours, but much much wider and much broader, much more robust built. Have you ever been to a place called Purgatory? Nope. Okay. Don't don't know where that's at okay now uh purgatory like like way up west i think we i think we drove through it one time but as far as getting out and stopping no I, i've just I heard of it that. i've just heard of it uh in different interviews mentioned and i know it's related to kunbo baker but i don't know much about it so i was just curious about it. no I, I hadn't heard about that place um uh, like i said booger bottoms peacock holler uh, and that's going to be a local name uh, and then Sycam Sycamore Hollow on the river down here. That's that's uh that's uh it's got a lot of zinc mines up there on that face cliff and lots of reports. Used to be lots of reports uh from that area, but the people have since moved away and there's it's all all the houses up in there are abandoned now. And there's like four homes. Do you think the Sas all Sasquatch are still there? Oh yeah, oh yeah, I'm sure they are. They, they, usually when they pick a spot, they don't go nowhere. I don't know where everybody gets these migration deals. And maybe the ones up north do. Mine are not there. They're, now, they may bounce around four, five, six, eight, ten miles, you know, to, to wherever the food's good. Uh, but usually if, if it's like this year, they, they ain't, they're parked. They ain't moving. Uh, there's enough stuff to eat. The only time I ever see them disappear is when it gets like last year. Uh, they, they disappeared on me, and they just now showed back up in the last four and a half months or so you couldn't tell you where they went either what's how long has it been since you you've seen a bigfoot um let's see when was turkey season <laughs> uh april april gotcha yeah wow. yeah it's it stepped out in the pipeline uh and then when it when it saw the hen decoy up there it looked, you know, and looked and saw me and turned and went right back in. Uh, and this is, I, this is one of the places that they know me there. So it, it wasn't too freaked out. It was just looking for a, a meal. But uh, I've kind of, oh, well, I had to shoot at one of the males over here. And so they've kind of, they kind of stopped coming straight up to me and hanging out like they used to. Uh, it's now kind of dangerous. <laughs> I, I wouldn't hurt them to say that. So I just shot over his head so he'd leave me alone. That's the only reason I've done it. And they they ran mosquitoes for about a month, and he started popping back in, you know. And I tossed fish over the deal when we fished, but it wasn't like it was. I mean, but yeah, as far as getting in there and seeing them on the river, that that's not too big of a problem, you know. The neighbors all know about them over there. 
most of them, most of them won't even go on the river. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm so thankful for your time. Um, it's been over an hour. This has been amazing. We'll end with this. Like, <clears throat> what are the questions that people like me are not asking that we should be asking about these creatures? Um, well, mainly, why do y'all want to get so close to them? That's what I want to know. Uh, I understand the the uh, infatuation with them, but they're a highly dangerous animal. Uh, if you're if you're not well aware of their body language uh, and their postures, uh, you guys have got all the calls w almost all wrong uh, for what they stand for. Um, the Ohio how is a location call between uh, a married what we what we would call me and you a married couple or a you know that's uh, from his. From him to her, that's what that is, and that's uh, every night before dark. They, she should give that off because the males do not stay with uh, the clan most of the time. Uh, they're around very close, but usually don't stay with them because they're kind of dangerous. They're pricks. Sure. But what you get a, a family clan, uh, you know, where it's, it's several of them and they all work together, it's a totally different atmosphere. Uh, there'll be one or two that make all the decisions. And everybody else, they they might not like it, but they'll go along with it. Uh, if you have a problem with one of them of the clan, uh, and you ever get alone with him, uh, he's probably gonna kill you. Uh, that's just that's just the way they are. They're very um, act like a little sport rotten kids. What they act like. Uh, if they don't get their way, they get mad. And it could be day, two days, three days, four days, five days before they get unmad. And mm -hmm. sometimes they just don't ever get mad at you. They just, they don't like you. And that's where you see all this stuff going on. But a lot of it's trying to communicate to you, uh, you know, because they, they, they just soon work with you than against you, for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, but, if, you know, if they can't trust you, they, they, they won't do, have nothing to do with you. They're, they're, they're very weird like that very selective who they who they hang out with i mean i took a a, a man and a couple out of uh florida over to uh this place the, the the dangerous squatches and within three hours after dark they were already gone and i'm not talking about the squatches i'm talking about the other two people uh yes, they yeah. they literally left in a full they i've still got their gear they won't even talk to me on facebook or nothing now they just got too scared i tried to send them their uh well uh, she got hit with a stick oh uh across the back that was about three inches in diameter knocked her on the ground uh and i told him you know once it gets dark put your helmets on and he didn't put a helmet on didn't even bring one and they they i mean they just rained down on us which is that's just where they are i'll sit there in it you know just 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 pad up and just just sit there and let them let them take it you know because they'll they'll eventually get tired of it and that's when they'll come into camp and start uh you know why aren't you leaving you know they get a little more bold uh but they they won't just rear up and smack you in the head for no apparent reason uh you know he's not going to kill you because you come into his territory you know he's just not he's going to try to push you out and you just do 8, 10, 12, 13, 14 times that you're just not going to push out. He'll try to make friends with you uh, if you're not taken from his belly. Mm. Wow. That's fascinating. When you go to, when you go to take it from their food, that's when they get mad at you. Country, the thing that's just, weird is that other people have said that that whole leave half of what you what you get when that's, you go that's, hunting. That comes, that comes from back in the old days, from back when – we used to work hand in hand together with them, you know. That's how you, that's how you lived side by side with them. You left you left half, you know. So hey, I know you're here, you know, because we're, we're we're much better hunters than they are by far. They're just better woodsmen than we are. Because mm. if you'll set a man if you'll set a man in the woods for a year, I guarantee you he'll be a different person. And oh, if sure. you get a man that knows how to hunt and fish. Uh, and he has a, a squat sighting. You turn that man into you can you can put him up against it, and if he can hold his gumption to it, and I should say, you can put him up to against any man that the military ever trained. I guarantee you, as far as brass, you know, having the gumption. Wow. 
because uh, these things can have a psychological effect on you even if you let them i mean i picked that up in look, a, a lot I, of the way i look the way i look at it if you if you can't build a car you ain't top dog you know what i'm saying if you can't right. make a projectile come out of a bullet you know out of a gun you're not top dog uh but until you level the playing field and then who's top dog yeah sure. that's the thing we've we lost we've lost that 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 old way to us you know we we've become very uh uh easy going i guess you would say lazy i agree with that it, country before we we finish up do you have any any final last words or or uh uh, yeah, uh, when you go, when you guys go to wood knocking, don't knock the fire out of the tree because that's a sign of aggression. Uh, that's why you have all the, uh, that's why they come into you immediately. Uh, I know that's what you want. Uh, start off with a, with a single light wood knock. Uh, cause when you go to pounding on that wood and like a lot of these guys are doing, uh, you, you're going to, you're one of these times you're going to run across the wrong squatch and, and he's going to be looking for a female or a clan to join and well that's a sign of aggression uh so don't do that don't don't make don't hit it as hard as you can i mean just just light knocks fair enough uh three 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 is uh you're in trouble uh that's what their 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 deal is uh if they scream you're screwed uh after the three knocks go and they go to screaming at you uh or wailing like if you hurt one yeah you're probably not going to get out alive if if you're not used to it, I mean, they're they're very 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 fast. And at dark, you can't hardly see them when they're moving. I mean, they're that fast. Mm. Yeah, you might catch the eye fl- eye glow, you know, occasionally uh, if they look at you. But other than that, you're just going to catch a, a a little fleeting shadow, you know, with the with the light. Ninety nine times out of a hundred. I mean, that's they're, they're very sneaky. That's incredible. Thank you so much, country. This has been an incredible chat. I really appreciate it. You bet. Here at Bigfoot Society, our goal is to provide a platform for those that have encountered Bigfoot to share their encounter in a safe and respected environment. But we need to hear your story. If you've experienced something that you just can't explain, please send me an email at BigfootSociety at gmail.com then we can start the conversation. I know a lot of you have not shared your encounter at all. It's been 20 years and it's time that you get this off your chest and then you can get some well-deserved rest because I know you haven't been sleeping. I understand what you're going through and I appreciate every one of you listening.